Good evening, and welcome to News Channel 8. I'm Jerome Ajean, and here's some of the top stories we're working on tonight. The aftermath of Judge Duramo's death, an 11-year-old's tragic ending, and your Caribbean report. These stories and more coming up next on News Channel 8. Top stories tonight, the death of Superior Court Judge Francis Duramo has many people shaking their heads. Did the popular judge commit suicide or was he killed? Why did the Attorney General's office rush the autopsy results to the general public so quickly? News Channel 8's Wes Small files this report. The death of Francis Duramo has this reporter definitely shaking his head. As I said yesterday, uh, doing uh, sports trivia uh, with Francis Duramo, um, and just knowing him for uh, many years uh, just has, has me in shock. Uh, the media has taken a beating these days because the speculation is still running rampant. And let me tell you why the media is taking a beating. I, I split the paper down in half today, and one side I put suicide and the other part I put murder um, because this is definitely what it boils down to. Why would a 50-year-old judge in the prime of his life with two beautiful young children and everything to live for um, end his life? Now, he was last seen on Sunday morning, this reporter found out from witnesses, and he was in good spirits, that in the area of Gallows Bay. Uh, so then um, he was missing from work. He didn't um, come here for uh, work yesterday, and marshals found his lifeless body apparently hanging by a rope in his Schooner Bay apartment. Um, as far as a suicide notice concerned, this reporter has heard two versions, one that it's a handwritten note and the other that it was a note uh, on the computer. Uh, also, uh, when, when it leads to speculation that the judge was murdered, we have to understand that the night before, 25-year-old Jonah Andrews, from uh, from Kennedy Projects, Kennedy Housing Community, was shot down with about five or six shots heard, and he took at least three shots. Now, he was dead um, on arrival um, at that location. Now, there's been some speculation that perhaps Mr. Uh, Jonah Andrews was present that day that Jeffrey Brown and uh, his co-defendant, his brother-in-law, Melendez, um, did suspectedly or allegedly did the crime at JFK, taking the life of a couple of people and wounding others. But uh, when you talk uh, to the Attorney General Frazier, he contends that all witnesses are where they're supposed to be. I am not a law expert. I'm not a forensics expert. I can only tell you what I hear on the street and the evidence that I gather uh, from hand-to-hand -hand knowledge and what's given to me by the people who protect us the Virgin Island Police Department, and the Attorney General's Office, and the federal government, the Department of Justice. After all, if we can't depend on these people to protect our lives and to protect high officials like Judge Francis Duramo, then where, where are we in society? Here at Superior Court, I do realize one thing today. I've lost a friend, and also we've lost a judge, a father, and also a, uh, a human being. Here at Superior Court, I'm Wes Small for News Channel 8. Thanks, Wes. And if Judge Duramo did take his own life, the question is why? And why would anyone take his or her life, especially if they were just 11 years old? Tonight, News Channel 8's Wes Small brings you a two-part series on suicide. On April 16th, little 11-year-old Jahim Herrera, a fifth grader in Atlanta, Georgia, DeKalb uh, County, uh, took his life. 
and um, it's very sad. Now, his young sister discovered the little boy's body as he had apparently hung himself in the closet um, with his belt. He went to Dunair Elementary School, and ironically, young Herrera's death came just one before an 11-year-old boy who recently took his life as well. You're seeing his picture here. On April 6, little Carl Joseph Walker Hoover in Springfield, Massachusetts, after being called gay and other horrible um, accusations from school bullies, what can be going on in people's minds as they commit suicide? That is what prompted this reporter to have a two-part special tonight as we begin our series um, with um, the youngsters um, who think about doing this tragic event, and then we move into the older people. Um, let's take a look. Well, Wes, it's more than just suicide. It, it, it goes back to, like you said, bullying. And we need to know the root of what's causing the bullying. Parents need to be um, informed of what's going on in their child's life at school and so they can act on top of it immediately. In regards to bullying, there are three types of bullying. There's the physical bullying, and of course, that's when children actually punch, kick, um, have physical contact with the victim. Then there's verbal bullying, and this is probably what um, Haim uh, probably experienced with the teasing, the discriminatory slurs, um, they would uh, call names on the child, just a lot of teasing. And then now what we see a growing trend is there's cyber bullying. And what that is, is when kids use electronic mail to harass, to threaten, it could be sent in text messages, it could be sent in emails, it could be sent on blogs, and we see a rise in the cyberbullying. I think what parents need to be aware of is these three types of bullying, and um, some children would come home and actually tell their parents what is actually going on, and, and that's great. But then we have the kids who are, are either fearful, um, feel scared, they don't want to come home and tell their parents what's going on in the school system or even in their neighborhoods. And when that happens, the parents have to be very, very mindful of what's going on and look for signs and symptoms so they can know what's going on. And some of those signs and symptoms that a parent may need to be very wary of is, for instance, let's say a child come home and he or she um, is extremely hungry on a daily basis. You may want to know, why is my child coming home hungry? Probably the bully is taking their snacks, um, eating their lunch, and they're not going to say anything, so they come home and they're hungry. Another sign or symptom um, may be that the child may come home with unexplained bruises. Mm -hmm. um, the child may perhaps tell you something else happened, but it doesn't match up to the bruise or the scratch that you see on your child. So you need to be very observant. Um, you need to be very um, concerned, and when you see these signs and symptoms, you, you may want to um, contact the school official, um, you know, you may want to just get involved um, right away. Another sign or symptom that a parent may want to be concerned about is if this child does not want to go to school. They perhaps may say that um, they're having headaches, stomach aches, they use a lot of somatic complaints. Um, if the parent still puts the child in school, this child may go to the school nurse and then complain to the school nurse that they want to go home because they're feeling um, headaches, or they feel sick or ill. So this child is looking for a way to be safe and try not to be in the school environment. This may also happen in your neighborhoods. For example, if your child, you know, does not have a lot of friends, but for some reason you see a lot of kids coming around your home, calling your child um, to play with the child, and um, usually these kids, the, the bullier is doing this because they either want to take the kid's toys, ride his or her bicycle, and you know, you got to be very careful and, and be concerned. Um, when the parent detects these signs and symptoms, it's very important for the parents to contact the school officials. Contact the school officials, let them know what you're observing, what your child is telling you. Um, if it's in the neighborhood, you, you want to, um, you know, politely try to contact the parents. But if it's in the school environment, I'm not going to recommend contacting the parent directly. You want to have a, a parental conference to discuss this in the school environment because, you know, sometimes it can get, you know, very... Exactly. And we want to avoid...